everyone, what's up? So welcome back to Mentor Coaching Success. Really glad you can join us. Now in this video, we're going to break down one of the most important competencies known as competency number eight, facilitating learnings and growth. Now too often, we're so focused on designing of actions. We're so focused on just getting the steps to do, 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 rather than being. Now, the sense of being, it's more important than just doing and doing and doing. Now, because, you know, it's very easy to prescribe and ascribe certain steps and for the client to move forward. But when you are considering this at a PCC level, now we're beginning to integrate more and more about the different complexities and different layers to really help support the client in their development. So what's going to be important for us to consider is as we go deeper in the competencies, I want you to take a moment to ruminate upon all that we've discovered so far. So I want you to watch this in tandem with video number one that will lay out the support that will really help you in your progress towards achieving a higher credentialing level. Now remember, these videos are meant to support coaches from all around the world in their mentoring process. So you want to engage a great mentor coach. Now where do we find some of the best mentor coaches around the world? Right, right here at Coaching Changes Lives. So let's dive right into today's competencies known as competency number 8, which is on facilitating clients' growth. It says this partners with clients to transform learnings, insight into action, promotes clients' autonomy in the coaching process, process. Now today, we're going to dive into point four and five, where it says here, supports the client in identifying potential results or learnings from identified steps and actions, and invites client to consider how to move forward, including resource, support, and potential barriers. So in this part, we're going to go deeper in these two points here, and we're going to create a, de a delineation between the ACC level and the PCC level, and what is really required. So for those of you who've joined us in our Mastering Coaching Program, maybe you've joined us in our NLP, or maybe in our Team Leadership Programs, whichever programs you come and, uh, come and engage with us, what's important at this stage, we're going to delineate between what is expected on the minimum skill level at the ACC level, and the minimum skill level at the PCC level. So I'm going to show all, all of us what the PCC level really looks like, and this is what we call the behavioral markers. Now, by no means this is where you're going to use to kind of grade whether you've done right or wrong, but we're going to use this to deepen our understanding in the core competencies. So let's take a look at this. Now, in the PCC behavioral markers 8.2 to 8.4, we're going to go deeper. It says here that coach invites client to state or explore the client's learning in the session about themselves. And I call it the who of the client. In 8.3, Coach invites the client to state or explore the client's learning in the session about their situation, and I call it the what. And 8.4, coach invites the client to consider how they will use the new learnings from this coaching session. So there you have three very important parts. Learnings about the person, learnings about the situation or the context, and application of the learnings forward. So I often see this, you know, it's great to hear the learnings and aha and the what, all those are great moments in the coaching process. But if it's left there, it's just left there. It's not going to go anywhere forward. So what's important as coaches is to remember what we call tying insights into action, tying the insights into future forwarding, tying the insights into future pacing. And that's a very important element, the application of learnings and insights to help the client to really move forward. So that would create a more holistic approach for the coaching process. And that's really important for all of us out there as coaches. Now, I'm going to layer this part, what we call the leap forward at the PCC level. And let's take a look at this. Now, here... It's where I go deeper, what I call the co-creative co uh, toolkit, Leap Forward Level 2 for coaches. Now, at this level, we are really looking at the PCC level, and I call this Leap Forward. Remember our three phases, connect, co-create, and leap. So, in the Leap Forward, we have a few layers. Learnings from actioning. So, what are the learnings and from the steps the clients are taking? In three different layers, this is going to go deeper in the sub-layer. Number one. Exploration of learnings of the situation. So this is where we look at the what about that the client is facing. This is the what. And the exploration of the learnings of the person, that's the who, and application of the learnings in the future forward, or what we call future pacing. Now, there's a clear distinction between the what and the who. Now, the what is basically the context, the challenge at hand, the problem or the performance issue at hand. We have to separate them with the person. And oftentimes, if we don't separate them and we don't help the client to see the distinctions between them, the client kind of meddle up between the learnings of both, right? They think that, oh, you know, this, this is the same learnings. Because we don't want them to repeat the same learnings and again and again and again. We want them to take the learnings and be able to apply and to form new habit patterns. And that's really important. 
And that's when, after going deeper in the learnings, that's when we begin to explore the expediency of the resources and support to take the next step forward. The expediency, it's not about quickness. It's not about moving fast, 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 fast. No. Expedience, it's about the ability to appropriate or uh, to find suitable and appropriate things. Things like resources, additional resources. And you notice this additional resources. It could be the resourcefulness of the client. So the client perhaps may not have the resources available. But what are the resources they can tap around them or who they can reach out to? Those are the resources. What support do they need to really help them take the next step forward? Autonomy and accountability. This is so important because the responsibility lies on the client to achieve the outcome because it's the client's outcome. And we want them to take the full autonomy in the whole process, right? We say own autonomy equals ownership of the process. Autonomy equals to the ability for the client to be self-driven, motivated from internally to get the outcome that they desire. And finally, potential results and barriers. What are the potential threats that, come, that might come the client's way as they're progressing? What are the, as they progress, what are the potential uh, results that they expect? So sometimes they call this progress potentiality, right? What are the potentiality out there? What is the expected results? Now here, I've given us some potential questions you could ask. Questions like, with the action steps you have designed, what learnings are you gaining about the situation or yourself? What, how would you take the learnings forward? What resources or support would be suitable or appropriate to help you move forward? And how could you account your progress? And what are the potential results you expect? And what are the potential barriers that might come your way? So there you have, I've given you a quick overview into these few different layers. So for those of you watching this, you're probably at your PCC level or you're preparing for the PCC level. This is the activity we're going to do together. First, I'm going to, I want to encourage all of you to kind of craft potential questions you could ask at each one of these categories, the L, the E, the A, and the P. So L, the learnings. And in the learnings process, I want you to categorize them into three different parts. Number one, learnings about the situation, that's the what. Number two, learnings about the who. And number three, how do you elicit the learnings? How do you create the connection of the learnings to help them move forward? Or how, how could they apply the learnings in their future uh, process? Or maybe future anticipated challenges that might arise, how would they apply the learnings? So I want you to list down some potential questions you could ask in the comment section below. This way of learning will really help us to really go deeper. So do this individually first before doing it as a team. So once you've done the L, then go to E, which is expediency, resources and support, then go to A, autonomy, accountability, and then you go to P, potential results and barriers that might come the client's way. Okay, so take a moment right now to pause this video, post your own answers down below, and when you're ready in your teams, you're going to discuss, you're going to look at each other's comments, you're going to look at each other's um, statements and questions, and let's see and let's dive deeper. How do we make sense of all these questions? Now remember, coaching, it's not about the questions, because questions has no power, but it's about the application of the questioning. The generative questioning in that moment as we listen to the client and we're responding in that moment with the client. Right, So we, we don't have a fixed set of questions, but the reason we're doing this exercise is to kind of get you in the hang of it, to kind of get you thinking, how would you have crafted the questions in those contexts, in those situations? Now, don't memorize these questions, but these questions are there to facilitate the process of coaching conversation. Now, especially when you're starting off as a coach, and by now as you're preparing for your PCC level, it's really important that we tune our ears to really listen to what the client is saying at the moment. And then to craft our questions that will respond in totality of who the client is at that very present moment. And that's going to be important. So when you take this mentoring forward, what will happen is this. Our mentors at Coaching Changes Lives will really work with you to dive deeper, to work with you to unravel all the different facets of the coaching competencies and the behavioral markers. Now remember, the behavioral markers are there to serve as a guide. They're not there as to say that's a checklist that you've done this or done that. No, it's really helping you to go deeper in understanding of the core competencies. So do check out all the videos that we have on our YouTube channel on the Mentor Coaching Success. And Mentor Coaching Success is our global mentor group where we invite coaches all around the world who join our programs to be part of this year-long experience, right? So we're going to encourage you to come back again and again and again to really deepen your learning as a coach, to deepen your skill level, to deepen your competency level, and to deepen your ability to be aware of who you are in that process with the client. 
So if you're watching this video and you're wondering, hey, you know, how do I get, uh, how do I get involved in mentor coaching? Well, reach out to us at coach at coachingjesuslife.com and say, that, hey, Jedi, you know, can I sign up for some of the mentor coaching sessions that you have for your students there? Right. I look forward to seeing you in one of our sessions really soon because we cover a lot more detail in our mentor coaching success, in our coaching labs, in our mastering coaching, team leadership coaching, NLP, cognitive behavior coaching, brief your stories, so many exciting programs all ready for you. So if you love what you see and you will enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up, share this with your friends and click the subscribe button because you want to stay tuned to all the latest videos that we have for you.